Nando. I am Sir Ramesh. Is that good? Repository that I'll be using today. So 
So if in case you want to follow along, and by the way, how many, how many of you are planning to follow along? Okay. So you should have the code up in the repository. All right. Cool. So I'm Sid. And I'm, I work as a data analyst in, at Carson Solutions. We are a federal contracting uh, company. Uh, and we do enterprise modernization, which AKA is AWS for us. Um, and the goals of the talk uh, is that by the end, uh, you should hopefully know what AWS Lambda is. What is it used for? How can you use it? So you should be able to, I'm hoping, uh, make it a part of your uh, infrastructure uh, or think of using AWS Lambda if you're, if you're creating new uh, architectures. So with that in mind, intro to A. Okay. So AWS, you know, I want to say, AWS, if you haven't heard of AWS and you plan on working in the IT industry, uh, it's, a, it's pretty rough, it's pretty difficult times. Uh, I just want to know if, if you know AWS, like that's the first thing. Uh, even before they want to know your name. So AWS is, like uh, Peter said, it's pretty impressive. And they have a whole, um, I want to say more than 100 services. And it's just impossible to keep up with AWS. Uh, but I do try. So Lambda is just one of the many hot topics that AWS has to uh, offer. And uh, in case you haven't heard, uh, Lambda is from uh, the serverless uh, phenomena. And we'll be going into what the serverless is uh, in a moment. Uh, but at this point, just now that uh, we have come from what was in 2005 only a data center world to in 2010, um, the, uh, I want to say by 2006, Amazon introduced S3. And then uh, you had the virtualization revolution, and then the cloud, and then the Docker revolution, and Docker. Uh, I want to say Docker was uh, relatively unknown back in the beginning of the decade, like 2011. And by 2014, uh, Do Docker got a lot of spotlight. And by 2016, most deployments is containerized. So that's the sort of revolution that um, uh, Lambda, or serverless, is also uh, having in the industry. And uh, like I said, I'll be using Python 3.6. Okay. So for a pedagogical definition of what is Lambda, now Lambda is a purely compute resource that allows you to deploy code directly and not worry about infrastructure. So what it means is no easy tips. You don't have to worry about patching. You don't have to worry about security updates. You don't have to worry about the cost that comes along with the easy tool. You don't have to worry about um, pretty much even networking, uh, what subnets, um, well, uh, uh, there, is, there is a security component to Lambda, but it's, it's uh, not as huge as it, uh, it would be if you were using an EC2. And uh, all this comes from the serverless idea. Now, uh, serverless stands on the shoulders of Docker, or should I say the shoulders of containerized deployment. So uh, containers allowed uh, for uh, you know, multiple environments uh, within a single box. And, uh, um, Running a, uh, uh, so uh, Docker's allow you to run your code and not worry about anything else. And that's the idea which is at the core of the function as a service phenomenon. So you have the infrastructure as a service, a platform as a service, and now a function as a service. So function as a service really is, um, um, or, um, so serverless can be called function as a service. That's what I wanted to say. And uh, Lambda is AWS's offering of service. And we'll also be looking at one other example. So uh, what you see here is a open source framework for function as a service. Now, uh, while uh, AWS is, uh, uh, has Lambda, Google has Google Functions, uh, IBM has their own OpenWhisk, uh, which I think they have lent to Apache now. 
and uh, you also have Azure functions from Microsoft. Now you also have the same thing going on in open source world. And uh, here is the serverless framework, which is a abstraction. Uh, it's platform agnostic. It's on GitHub again. Uh, so if you want to know what exactly is going on, uh, if you want to know an approximation of what is AWS doing in the background when you're when you're pushing the code, uh, then uh, you know it's it's a good idea to go through this uh, GitHub link. All right. So. Um, What's the advantage of using Lambda? Like, why is it so important? Why is it so uh, hard a topic that everyone's, everyone seems to be talking about? Uh, it's simply because anything that you can use an EC2, uh, anything that you do on an EC2 uh, in your infrastructure, uh, you can do with Lambda. Or uh, I want to say most things that you want to do. And that's where we'll be touching on the limitations of Lambda uh, later on. So uh, if you're running, uh, let's say, an ETL job, uh, from your EC2, you could pretty well use Lambda for that. If you're using uh, uh, an EC2 for, uh, let's say, um, uh, connecting to different services and basically having a, a bunch of functions which uh, connect to services like from an S3 to an SNS or from an S3 uh, for application, you can pretty much use Lambda for that. So uh, is that the only advantage? Well, the other bigger advantage is cost. So, you know, cost benefit is pretty much the, uh, you know, the showstopper for a lot of people, which, uh, which makes AWS Lambda hard to ignore, you know. You get built in milliseconds, so get that, milliseconds. So that's six zeros after a point of a second, okay. So just to give a comparison, now a T2 micro is going, is going to cost you somewhere about uh, 1.6 cents per hour, but think of it. So even a 1.6 cents per hour, if you run it for a whole year, and let's say if you have four T2 micros, which is like an average sized uh, enterprise infrastructure which uh, a lot of people use, you're still looking at uh, not of uh, 600 to $800. Now all of that is, is really reduced to like, I don't know, with using Lambda, we have had uh, a bill of about $16 for the past year uh, at, at the place that I work. That's pretty impressive, right? You get the same job done, except at a lot lesser cost. So uh, that's one of the bigger advantages. Um, you get uh, 100 milliseconds, and that's the step that AWS uses. So really, if you're, even if the um, a millisecond as a unit is 10 to the power of minus 6, uh, you get billed at like 10 to the power of minus 4. So that's still a lot of zeros before you get to a second. You know, in my mind, uh, you can get you can get accomplished a lot uh, before you are even looking at one second. So, yes. So now we'll be looking at the yep uh, millisecond. Damn. I wanted to. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, well, I apologize. I don't know how that how they got slipped. Anyway. The point is true to the extent that you still have zeros, except it's not a lot. <laughs> So now we'll be looking at the dashboard. Okay. So uh, AWS has a plethora of services, which I don't even know if it's 100 or if it's more than 100. I just want to say a lot. And the way you find Lambda is in the compute section. Okay. You go to Lambda, and then it should display the dashboard, which it does not takes me directly to the functions. But if you don't have any, for those who are following along, this is the, first, this is the page that you would see, okay? A page where you can create functions. So what do we have here? We have something that says full account of concurrency. We have something that says code storage, to show some space here. And then we have a number of functions. Now because I've created functions, I have 
a number called eight. Now, if you if you have not used it at all, you should see here. And this here says my usage. Now, because I was doing some testing, uh, it shows some uh, graph going up and down. But if you haven't used it, you should you should pretty much see zero. And from this dashboard, before I get into a demo, I wanted to first talk about the CLI option. Uh, CLI, uh, as Doug Toppin has uh, pointed to multiple times in his presentation, you can do anything in the CLI uh, that you can use the dashboard uh, for doing. So instantiating EC2s, um, uh, creating VPCs, uh, uh, putting objects into S3. And you can use CLI for Lambda as well. You can use, uh, you can even uh, programmatically automate uh, Lambda. And that's the idea is to have a CLI where you can automate, you can schedule the automation, you can also uh, hand it over to someone as a technical knowledge transfer as opposed to having a, a, a huge document with a lot of screenshots. And while uh, uh, CLI is a very important option, this talk will not be covering CLI. Uh, uh, I'll only be doing dashboard because that's well, the talk is 101, and it's a lot more easier to keep it that way. So, now to start our first function. So, how do you do that? And AWS uh, has some options for you here. You can author from scratch. You also have blueprints that AWS is going to provide, and the blueprints pretty much comes in with some baked uh, connections, uh, depending on what you want to achieve. So, if you want to connect to S3, it has it gives you S3 connection. If you want to connect to SNS, it will give you that. If you want more permissions, well, you can ask for that as well. It, it's also runtime specific, so you can be like, I want S3 and Python. You could put that and it'll get you. Uh, we'll be looking at blueprints later, but initially we'll be looking at how to do a, a completely new function. And uh, uh, AWS also gives you a serverless uh, repo. So later in the talk, we'll be looking at what's called the serverless application model, uh, which, which is now um, gaining a lot of traction in the circles that I'm aware of. Uh, and that's, the, that's what I like to call Lambda++. Plus plus. We'll get there when we get there. And so before we can go into that, let me try to see if I can get a function. Okay. And for those of you who are uh, following along, uh, you can get all the code here. So that's that's a simple function that we'll be looking at right now. Uh, you can copy it, or you can just uh, type it in. So. Now this is the function that I already have. Oopsie. Let me just close that. Let me create a function. Okay, author from scratch. And here you can give. So um, a lot of you who have used S3 would know that AWS would require a unique name. You don't have to do that for Lambda. You can just put anything. I'm going to put Novalog. Uh, oopsie. Demo one. And the runtime is going to be Python 3.6. And I'm going to choose an existing role. And that's going to be Lambda basic execution. So we look into what goes into the making of a role uh, in, um, in about three, four slides ahead. Uh, right now, you can just choose Lambda basic execution, create a function. And then you have this. Console. Well, this is what that's my console. Uh, here you have a couple of things going on. You have uh, some functions here, designer, which offers you some options. Um, and then you have a Cloud9 uh, integrated right into your browser. So if any of you have used Cloud9, uh, it's a great service. Uh, it's a um, IDE, not exactly an IDE. It's actually a, I'd like to say it's a CentOS which is being deployed. You see the same Linux feel, okay? While I've, um, I won't be able to go to the root uh, in 
um, from the Cloud9 uh, browser that I have in Lambda. If you were to open a Cloud9 separately, it will you would be looking at a CentOS type of a, a Linux environment. I'm very careful to not use the word IDE. It's not an IDE. It does give you some autocomplete functions, but that's about it. Uh, you have to uh, uh, pretty much compile the function before you can get any return. So now here I have, let's see, uh, a tab that says import JSON and then some stuff. Now I, I don't need any of the stuff here. I'm going to delete. I'm going to hit tab. Then I'm going to do, let's do something. What would you like? Anything what? I didn't hear. No hello world. OK. Hello, no hello. <laughs> OK, how about the hello, no hello. I like that. OK. So notice that the moment I made the change, it saved. OK, and that just happened. If you notice an asterisk, and once it saves, um, you I mean, that uh, disappears, but you still have And that's how you let Lambda console know what's the output that you're looking for. OK, so uh, right now I have a Hello World template. OK. offers you the execution result uh, right in the bottom. Uh, usually what it returns is the return value. Like if, you're, if you were declaring in, um, uh, if you are declaring print statements, you won't be able to see that uh, here. But you can uh, see the whole thing uh, if you go to the top and you click on details. And then here's the CloudWatch log that was created when the function ran. And here you can see the return value, which is hello no log. And then you have some summary information. Now, you know, it's, it's a great pastime to actually look at the summary information every time I run some function, because, you know, that kind of tells me something of what's going on. Now, you see the and then build duration. You know, that's always me. So even if the duration was 0.29 milliseconds, I've been built for 100 milliseconds. And that's pretty much the Amazon step. So it could not even be, but still Amazon is going to fill you for milliseconds. And it's going to step through like that. So it's always the highest ceiling, OK? So if you were, let's say, a uh, thousand and one uh, point something, it's going to fill you for 1,100 milliseconds. Uh, and the resource is configured and maximum used. So uh, the event-driven uh, pure compute thing comes into play. Uh, I have a couple of options. Uh, basically, the max time for execution and then the max memory that I can provide. And that's what you see here. Now, we'll go into more details on uh, when you would need to customize max time. Uh, for this function, for the hello world or hello no uh, lambda, you have uh, worth of uh, memory used. So, here's another, you know, uh, so that tells me. Basic, like the most basic, basic in Python, is going to have a minimum of 21 MP. Now, the max memory used is subject to the runtimes. So if you were using Java, it's it most likely it's going to be upwards of 21. If you were using Go, I'm guessing it's going to be lesser because it's a cloud um, language, a cloud language. And then here you have some request IDs, start, end, report, and all the request IDs. So, um, 
The testament that I configured did not offer any more than just the key value. So I just wanted a hello world, so that's what I had. But you can pretty much have your um, JSON be modified to capture as many um, uh, details you'd like. Yeah, go ahead. What, what an event is? OK, so the question is, what's an event? OK, so I'll be so in the next demo. Um, I think two demos are down. You'll see what an event is. Uh, but uh, uh, simply speaking, you would want Lambda to run at, at when something happens. So let's say, um, and I mean, that's pretty much the demo, is that um, if I upload something to my S3, I need to get a text message. OK, so how is that going to happen? Well, um, uh, SNS uh, actually, uh, I want to say S3 gives you the option to directly send you a text message. But in this demo, we'll be using Lambda uh, to do that in Python. So uh, the whole point of Lambda is that it takes away the EC2, which is in between, uh, for like complex infrastructures. And you can just put a Lambda in. And when something happens, then I need to get it. It's pretty much like if then, if this, then that, the if logic. Um, so that's, that's the advantage of Lambda. And moving on. I'm not going to click on the CloudWatch log right now. Wait. Uh, that could be set as the effect of the event, uh, but the event is the cost. So uh, when I upload something to S3, that's the cost which shoots the effect. Yeah, go ahead. SQS. That's not what's going on here. Uh, yes, IoT. Uh, IoT, Internet of Things. Yeah, so I want to say that you can, um, if not directly uh, through CloudWatch, have a trigger uh, hooked to your um, hook to the Lambda console and have a piece of code. <laughs> hey. Yep. So there you go. I haven't used IoT, uh, at least in the Amazonian way, uh, in the words of Greg. So yes. So, moving on. Uh, well, the takeaway of this demo, of the first, you know, hello novel log uh, demo, is that you can run functions, okay, and that's all you're bothered about. You're not bothered about anything else. You basically define your program and then hit run. Okay. Now, 
uh, we'll be going into much complex uh, demos, which, which should hopefully, if there is any gap, fill. So, let's go on here. All right, so now is the time for the second demo, and second demo. I pretty much didn't talk any, um, about the uh, levers and controls that you have here, except for the test. Um, you have two things here. It says one is configuration and then is monitoring. And then you have uh, some stuff going on here. And then you have a lot of stuff going on here. So in this example, we'll be looking at the function that we're passing. So if you're used to Java, that's your public static void main. And in Python, that's your main function here. And uh, by default, the handler function should have the context and event. Okay. And they both do two uh, very distinct, very important things. And, uh, at a um, context example. Remember, uh, uh, I said that the Cloud9 integration is baked into the browser, and uh, you, it's pretty much a Linux um, um, uh, environment, uh, with, uh, uh, except that you don't connect to the instance. It's just in your browser. So that's exactly what the uh, handler function uh, thing is uh, uh, all about. So here you have the Lambda function, which is the name of the function. So it doesn't always have to be Lambda function. You can have it named different, except that you have Amazon. So you have to let AWS know by changing the name of your function. So I'm not going to change the name right now, but you'll be looking at another use case where you don't have if, uh, if there are dependent libraries and uh, uh, AWS is not offered, then you can pretty much um, uh, upload the package and have AWS run the whole thing. And, and if you have a different name, uh, for your function and a different main method, then here's where you're looking to change. Now, this is the handler information, the name of the function and also the name of the method. Now, in my case, uh, the handler uh, is uh, it's also called lambda hand, and that's by default, and I just prefer to keep it. Uh, and we have the code here. So what's this about? This code is simply capturing um, uh, some numbers. Okay, so all it's doing is a um, power of a part of a power, like m to the power of n to the power of o. So that's what this is about here. That's what I have. I have three times. And to demonstrate that you would have, depending on the complexity of the program, increasing time or increasing requirement for execution time. And so that's what we'll be looking at here. We go to the git pitch. Quick. Yep. So that's the example. So, um, what happens if you have something running and it takes more time? Okay. How long? Well, you can go to a max of five minutes. That's the max of the, uh, that Lambda allows. And that's the biggest, that's like one of the biggest limitations that I've heard people complain about Lambda is that it'll take, it, it, it's your function is not supposed to take more than five minutes. Okay? If it takes more than that, it's going to fail. So, why is it taking so long if, if the execution is in milliseconds? Well, it depends on code complexity. And that's the example here. So, I have a simple function, which is here, and I have some things going on. So it's basically calculating uh, the arithmetic logic, and it's printing the result. So it's going to print the result, and the time difference is I use the context uh, parameter. And uh, of course, AWS being AWS, they have a huge repo of APIs that you can use. And the way you use that is by calling the Bodu. Oh, I don't even have it here. OK. Oh, then you don't need it. So uh, in this example, uh, uh, the way I'm getting the time 
as to the yet remaining time in millis, uh, which is a default function, um, and you can pretty much just attach it to the context using the dot notation, and that's going to get you uh, your remaining time for all that function. So, uh, any problem with uh, what's going on in the code here? Is clear? Okay. So, I'm, I already have my test event. If you want to look at the JSON, it's pretty much it's the same hello world function that we had. I'm going to do a test here, and you'll see something happen. Oh, okay. Oh, a lot of zeros. Right? That, you see a lot of zeros here? That's because that's 10 to the power of 5 to the power of 7. Okay, that's right. Uh, but I think I did something which I was not supposed to do here. Or, uh, I think that's okay. So, I have an error message. Why do I have that? Well, I have it because the, um, the function was not able to execute within the time it was given. Okay. And that's the whole point of this simple demo, is to demonstrate that you can actually have, um, you know, depending on code complexity, time actually kills, and it really does in, in Lambda's context. So. Sure. So, in the console, in the Lambda console, you have in basic settings. Uh, that's I was uh, wanting to get an error message. Yes. So I was wanting to first get the error message and then explain what's going on. No problem. Uh, so in basic settings, where you define the memory and the time. Like space time, computers are what memory and time. So uh, the minimum that I can, you know, for time is one second. And the max is, is five minutes. That's a lot, exactly, that's a lot of milliseconds. Except um, it's not enough for a lot of uh, enterprise level operations, like say, for example, which usually runs for hours. Oh, and that, that's an easy application which, uh, uh, which could be ported out of the EC2, but because of the time constraint, uh, it's not as tight yet. I do know some people who have a, who have a hack for that, though. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I was actually rehearsing this presentation before I would actually, you know, dare to climb the stage here today. And the way that happened is that I, you know, uh, remember the, uh, you know, it's a Cloud9, it's a Linux thing baked into the browser comment. I can pretty well just click on the plus, uh, plus sign here, do a new file, and write comments, you know. Okay. Now, I can also save this. How do I save it? Um, let's do a... And then let's get to the bottom. And I'm going to save it here. Great. So, that's what is going on. And you can also have functions here. You can have... Uh, you know, you can use it as a uh, log uh, if you want to, if you want two tabs. And this is the same idea that says, um, you know, I don't, just one working console is not enough, I want more. And that's exactly what's going on here. Uh, so, the function failed because uh, the complexity or the amount of functions that I'm using uh, was not able to execute completely. So, how do I get it? I pretty much increase this uh, increase the time limit on the timeout that I have. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to execute it. It did take more than one second, probably more. Okay, and, and I have some information here. So the best way you can look at the output is by going to the CloudWatch logs. Um, and that's, you know, 
that's just what it is. Um, uh, they won't give you a, um, uh, a drag down where you can just scroll to see the whole message. It's, it's just not it. Uh, so for the function that we have, the first uh, return statement, or the first, uh, first print value, uh, the total time that it took is only about you know, 4,000. 45, which I want to say is like 55 milliseconds. And then the second one, if you want, if you notice, it pretty much ran instantaneously. Okay, it's a simpler function, so it didn't take a lot of time. But the third one did take a lot of time. It took like 1300 milliseconds. Uh, so that's, you know, that's where the timeout uh, function comes in place. If I were to limit that only for one second, it would fail. And that's pretty much what you're looking for. Uh, Depending on code complexity, you have to make sure that the function is one stateless. Uh, it, the scope of the function should be within the lambda uh, definition. And then it should also uh, be within five minutes. So these are two very important things uh, uh, to keep in mind. OK. So that's the, yeah, go ahead. So no uh, file uploads like you know some things which require you to maintain state. I mean, uh, HTTP request or API gateway is like one of the other core ideas of the serverless application model. Uh, but AWS, I want to say most of, or all of AWS is REST, and that's the status anyway. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so you can do asynchronous, you can also do synchronous. Uh, we'll get to that. Yes, invocation types. You do have asynchronous, you have synchronous, you have a push and a pull, and you do have that option, uh, except the scope of the function that you're defining is limited to, uh, uh, to the uh, code that you have uh, with it. It, can't, it won't hold any information with it. All right. So here. Uh, uh, the big takeaway of this demo is the context information. Okay, so that's where you store time. And now we are going on to the event information. Demo three. I can go here. Yeah, I'm going to click on that. So, pretty much even in this demo, I don't have a trigger. Uh, I'm just going to run it by the test function. And code looks like this. I have something called a OS N1. Okay. So for those who know Python or who have used the import OS library, uh, you would realize that this is an environment variable. And I can pass environment variables even on the Lambda function. And this is where the CLI option gets interesting. So you can have a, a big chunk of code and uh, have all the, pat all, all the important um, data points parameterized, and then pass it as an environment function, or uh, environment variable. So when you're automating infrastructure, that's what you, that's your input, and you can pretty much say, for example, uh, uh, instantiating an EC2, you can change the EC2 instance type, you can change the uh, uh, memory allocation, you can change uh, pretty much all the, th all the things that define an EC2, all the attributes. So, uh, but in this, uh, in this example, we'll be using the dashboard, and here's a simple environment function where this is a key and this is the value. Okay, it's a JSON input like all the other AWS functions. And in this code, I'm going to be using the, uh, I'm going to be first importing the library called OS, which is operating system. And then I'm going to be storing the uh, value for the key that says hello. At this point, I have WhatsApp. Uh, but, you know, let's change it. We can change it to something else. Uh, let's say Red Hat is cool. How about that? And I'm going to save this. And 
When I run the event, it's going to get me what I have stored in the event. So notice that I don't have the actual print statement uh, defined within the function. I'm only passing the key, and the value is going to be imported from, uh, imported from the key. So that's the example here. Let me first, uh, uh, before I uh, run it, this is how the JSON looks like. Now you'd notice that this JSON is different from what we had previously. Uh, previously we had only a key value and it was just repeated three times. And here you have something that says message, no message, and the message is still alone. So uh, the, the, this JSON structure that you see, this is the input for the test. Now, uh, when you create an, uh, when you create a trigger, or when you create an event trigger, uh, the uh, data which is passed to Lambda is also going to look like this, except it's going to be much more comprehensive. So that's where the logging comes in. So you can pretty much log any details you want. So for now, I'm just going to cancel it, and I have my function. It's going to say message to be printed, and it's going to get whatever the message says, which at this point it says. Uh, uh, this is no log, and then it's going to print the value um, or the uh, value that I have for hello, and it's going to end. Test. Cool. So I have some information here. I'm going to go look at the log, and in the log I have some info. It has cool. So the takeaway is we have used a JSON structure which uh, has passed in a value for the key. And Lambda was able to import it. Lambda was able to basically use a operating system library and take the value from there and uh, do what we wanted, which is to print it. So cool. And um, uh, in my learning of Lambda, I, and I'm no expert. I don't use Lambda uh, for my daily job. I'm just wholly invested in learning AWS because that's what my company is all about. Uh, learning about context and event pretty much um, uh, you know, some of the 101 of Lambda. And, and from on, uh, from now on, you know, it's more about how do you use different uh, events and different triggers, and uh, how do you use the uh, parameters which you have, which is uh, the time and the JSON, to identify what's going on. Yes. What? Uh, the editor meaning. Uh, this one? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not even here. Uh, you, can you customize it to, like, uh, have, like, an I? So, uh, I do, I, I have, so I want to say there could be a way. I haven't used it. I haven't explored it to the extent that I would want to turn it into a editor. And that, that's where, so when I look at what, it, what this looks to me like, it's like a BIM on a CentOS. Okay, so it's pretty much like I'm doing a BIM on a Lambda function, and, it's, and, and it just shows me the BIM editor, and I'm doing whatever, and I'm running it. Uh, and I'm exiting out of uh, the Vim and running the, the Python function. Probably. I've just not explored it. Uh, uh, in my experience that I've come across, the auto-completion is the only feature that is close to an ID that I find in this editor here. Um, uh, any more than that, like say, if you're importing a library, it, um, uh, it doesn't automatically show all the uh, methods that you can call in that library. Uh, it also does not show if you've made an error until you run it. And then you have to have uh, multiple print statements to see uh, where the execution failed, you know, things like that, which is not 
um, you know, which is not yet an IDE. Um, so, with AWS CLI. Uh, is that your question? Um, I wanted to say that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, this is another uh, difference between the Cloud9 uh, and, uh, and what you have here, is that you can also go to the previous levels here. So you're pretty much stuck at, at you know, what it seems like is uh, that slash task slash the folder that I'm running in. So that's, um, I want to say you should be able to configure a uh, output um, uh, or an input from CLI uh, which throws a Lambda function in which gives you an output. Uh, but I'm not, I don't have an answer to can you run Terminal right now. Yeah, sure, that's where the uh, CLI comes in, right? That's so, uh, if you want to, you know, say, uh, you don't want to log into the dashboard and you want to schedule a Lambda event. The way you do that is you first have, you create an IAM and, you know, get yourself the secret key, the access key, and uh, lock, uh, make sure that you have the uh, permissions right uh, with the uh, being able to create Lambda or being able to create a, a trigger in S3. And then uh, you can pretty much use AWS CLI, which should have all the required API documentations and do what you want. So that can be done. Uh, it can also be, I've also seen it being programmatically done. So I know it can be done, except uh, we are going to limit to dashboard only. All right. So that completes the third demo. I'm pretty happy. Okay. So now we are going into the territory of uh, event triggers. So before I would want to do that, I just want to give a small example of how, of what could be done, um, of just like one example of what could be done using Lambda. You had a question? Yeah, okay. And here, uh, in this, in this uh, demo, uh, you see two things here. PVC was only the Lambda function in the cloud. Was locked. Now, so the SNS. So SNS, uh, for those who don't know, is simple notification service. You could use that for getting an email, getting a text message, getting a JSON, getting, uh, I'd want to say even uh, HTTP uh, stuff, but I'm going to be using the SNS here to get, uh, get a text message, I think. Is that what I have configured? <laughs> yep, that's the text message. That's my phone number right there. Uh, anyway, so if those of you following along, you know, if you would want to test for it yourselves, you could pretty much copy the code uh, from the repo. Just be sure to change. Uh. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I was actually about to keep this uh, here just so that you know it would buzz uh, when I get the uh, stuff in. <laughs> yep, totally. 
So the way this thing would be executed is by having the role that lets me do that. Okay. So the road to Lambda goes through the IAM. And this is by far, in my learning curve to uh, getting some understanding of Lambda, uh, had, uh, uh, IAM took most of the time. Okay. So uh, and that's because I'm using Python, and Python is something easy. Uh, but if I'm private using, say, Node.js, and I would assume Node.js would probably take more longer. Uh, but IAM is a very important concept, uh, as far as Lambda is concerned. So here in execution role, I have something that says choose an, execute, uh, choose an existing role, and then it's SNS publish. So to uh, get to see what we have in SNS, oopsie. JSON structure that you see here, uh, this is key and values, and all it's saying is that when uh, uh, the lambda is triggered, it's going to have an output, and the effect is to allow, it's going to create logs, it's going to put in, uh, uh, for the SNS resource that I have, it's going to um, pull in the portal client and send me a text message. Here is the example. So I'm just going to quickly go to see the uh, JSON structure. So this is going to be uh, so this is my input, which is the same hello world, and I'm going to um, just have my uh, mobile here placed. And any questions on what's going on in the uh, code? Is it clear? Do you have any questions? So uh, just to breeze through, I'm uh, creating a new uh, instance from Bodo3 client. Bodo3 is a default uh, for anything to do with Python and AWS. And I'm creating uh, the instance for SNS and uh, just calling the publish uh, method. And I'm just putting this uh, text message. And I'm going to do text. OK. Did it run? It did. It should run. It says you should get a text message. Let's see how long it'll take. I'm going to put it here. So this is a pretty simple uh, demo. I just wanted to put this in uh, because why not? It's easier to it's easier for people to visualize the output when they have something coming to their mobile as opposed to going into the e and uh, that's what we'll be using for the other examples that I'll be having uh, coming up next. So here is a simple but very powerful. Uh, Example. Now, this is where the event trigger okay. took about a minute, but, it, but it's here. Let's see what it says. Hello from Lowlock. So, uh, hello from Lowlock. Uh, I'm sure you can't see it, but that's what it says. Trust me. <laughs> so, in this demo, uh, I have the input. Now, uh, uh, previously you only saw the test event giving the input. The test event would have some JSON, uh, which would trigger off the lambda. That would run the function, get me an output. Here I'm actually going to have uh, an SC, which I have configured, uh, to give a, to, um, you know, trigger the input, uh, trigger the lambda function. And that's going to run the code and get me an output. Okay? But before I do that, I want to click on S3. Okay, so that gives me the S3 information. Notice that I can't see anything else. I can't see the basic settings. I can't see the execution role. All that is taken off. I can only see the Nova log, uh, uh, S3 lambda. And that's also my, that's the name of my, that's the global name of my S3. And it says enabled. 
So when the if, when the ob when an object is created, I should see uh, the uh, I should see the lambda invocation fire. Uh, let's look at the code here. Okay. So uh, the code looks like it has a lot of lines. Trust me, it's not. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's just a lot of print, print statements that I put again and again, uh, just so that I would know what's uh, happening on lambda. So uh, to begin with, I'm importing the JSON library, the Bodo 3, and the OS. Well, OS is not necessary here, but I just have it as legacy. And then a print command which says starting invocation and the, uh, the main function. So um, before I would go deeper. So this is an example of the uh, trigger uh, that SC is going to send. That's the object. This is how it's going to look like. And um, let me copy. Uh, JSON Parser is a very useful tool. I highly recommend this for anyone who's using JSON. Help me a lot to understand what's going on. Um, so uh, here you can actually see that I have records, which is which is my first object, and that has a lot of key values. I have the S3 uh, bit of information, which has the object, the tag, the key, and all that. I have a response element. I have uh, some user identity stuff going on. So basically, I have a lot of key values here, which is structured um, um, as a uh, array and element. Uh, which is a JSON structure, and that's what I'm using to pull here. Okay, so um, the event of uh, uh, I'm looking to get the name of the bucket, and that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm looking to see S3 in the bucket. So records the first object, and then in S3, and then in bucket, I'm looking for the name. So that is what is going on in the first statement. And I pretty much have the same thing repeated again and again. Okay. So I want the bucket, and I want the object. Um, I want a uh, text message um, uh, that says that you have a new uh, object uploaded to your S3. That's all it's going to do. Uh, I'm going to upload, and it's going to send me a text. So here is an example. Any questions as to uh, the uh, progress that we have made thus far? Oh, with AWS, you can actually choose where your resource is hosted. So the next demo, you're going to see uh, the object application. So um, uh, AWS has, or S3 has, the course replication uh, function where you can have an S3 in Northern Virginia, and then I'm going to have an S3 in Northern California. And that's the point of the replication is that if there is downtime on one region, you would still have it on the other region. And, um, and instead of doing it using cores, uh, we'll be looking at a Python code, which would basically copy the object from one bucket, put it into the other bucket, and send a text.
Oh, that's great. So, again, my, um, let me first go look if I'm actually, oh, okay. All right, for those of you who are wondering what's going on here, um, notice that I have my phone number uh, hashtag, which is basically commented out. Uh, instead, what I have here is a email uh, setting. So, uh, in SNS, I've created uh, the ARN. The following SNS, the Warlock to no Warlock SC to SNS topic, which uh, I have configured with my email. Uh, any of you who would want to, uh, who have used, who have not used SNS, want to see how that works? No. Okay. So it's pretty simple. You just have to uh, create a topic and then you subscribe to the topic. That's the pub sub of the SNS. And it's um, and all I've done is to put the ARN for the SNS resource. And uh, I'm just calling the SNS resource uh, when I'm uh, initiating the publish method. And I'm passing that as a parameter. I have a subject, and then I have a message. Um, for those of you following along, you can put your own email and hit test, and you should see um, um, your message and your subject pop up. So which is why I have, you should get an email uh, message here. Now we can. Okay, so this is a interesting input here. Now, um, I was up, up until this point using only the hello world JSON input, but you can actually have a lot of different input styles. And AWS actually gives you all these inputs. Now, also notice that you can change the JSON uh, once you have a template to add as much details you want. Uh, in this example, I'm gonna be using the SV get object. Now, this is a, um, Amazon um, a provider JSON, that's the input. And uh, it says, uh, because it's a test um, uh, example, it says happy face, but I'm gonna be uploading a different um, object and that's what I would expect to see for the name of the object. The key is the name. So key in JSON here is the object in the object that you upload. So I'm gonna cancel out. Uh, in this example, I'm not sure if there is any value in looking at the email. Um, we could probably do that. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so that's a test of that box. And let me upload. So this is a example object. I'm going to upload this to my Come on. Great. So. Let me try to see if I can open this thing out here. I don't know if it's a good idea, but let's. object in my bucket. And the name says scene.jpg. That's the notification. And that's the example. I uploaded an object to S3 and Lambda sent me a text message. Now, of course, you don't have to use Lambda. You could just simply configure the S3 to send you a notification. Uh, but I just wanted to demonstrate the event for a simpler example. So, uh, uh, one of the real world use cases that I've seen uh, is for replication of objects, or say, for storing logs. So uh, this is something which I know the uh, team next to where I said uh, uses. Uh, they use a lot of Lambda functions. And one amongst 
uh, their list is to use Lambda to storing RDS logs. So RDS is going to, or Amazon is going to take away logs after five days. But what if you want to build an archive? What if you want to know what happened a month ago? Uh, the way they have uh, come around solving this problem is by using Lambda. And they have, they basically uh, use a Lambda to um, take all the logs created for a day and shove it to us. And that way they have all of it and the whole thing runs on Python. Uh, and this is one example. But we'll be looking at the example that says, So the, uh, the first part of the code is something that you have already seen multiple times uh, in this uh, presentation. Uh, you have, up until this point, uh, just values being stored. Uh, the name of the bucket, the object, uh, you know, the region maybe. So here is the name of the source bucket, and here I have to find, have explicitly, um, um, you know, mentioned the name of my, uh, and as you can see, it says no other duplicate bucket. So source bucket is called um, what is it called? No other source bucket. Okay. So this is my no other source bucket, and this is the target bucket, which I call the duplicate bucket. And as you can see, uh, in the source bucket, I have nothing in. But once I upload something, it, it's going to go to the target bucket. Uh, one other change. Uh, this ties into a different regions thing. So here I have Northern Virginia, our own Stopping Virginia. Okay. So I'm going to take uh, the object that's uh, put on the first bucket, and I'm going to put um, shove the uh, U.S. West region. I think it's U.S. US West one. Yeah, if I'm not wrong. And then I'm going to get a text message. So this is the extra stuff that I've done. Uh, uh, course, does not send you a text message. It doesn't send you anything. Uh, 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 the function that I have here, or the function that you see, it's going to send me, uh, it's going to first duplicate it, and then it's going to send successfully duplicated. So I know that the function has run. I don't have to go to the log to check to see. Um, let's see. Because I have an email open. Okay, cool. uh, to explain what's going on code a little bit here, uh, I'm, st um, I'm using a API that says copy object. Okay, that's the documentation. Uh, I'm instantiating the S3 uh, using the 4 to 3 client. Let me go back here. Yep. yep. So I'm, so here's my, I'm using the API that uh, uh, Amazon provides to copy the object. So here's where I would like the uh, E feature come in, in that if I have the Bodo 3 client being imported, uh, it would be nice to have uh, a drop on what methods I have as I uh, keep typing, like in Spider or in you know, the other IDs out there. But I don't, uh, at least not yet, we have the uh, option. So copy object has uh, the parameters, which is the source bucket. Oh, sorry. Uh, the source bucket, the object, and then the target bucket. Okay. So it's, it's, um, I have not defined this function. I'm just using what uh, AWS has. And I'm storing a res the response in this uh, variable. 
And we, we can look at how the output of this function looks like in the CloudWatch logs. Uh, but just to give uh, the time, I just wanted to um, wrap this uh, demo so we can go to the next one. Here I have something that says date. Now notice, I'm going to be using the state information here to send me, uh, uh, to lock uh, the success or failure information here. Okay, the state is pretty much the REST API. It's your standard success, the 200 uh, value that uh, you have uh, in the HTTP method. And I look to see if the state is 200. If it is, I'm going to get a success. If not, I'm going to get failure. Okay. And Let me choose AWS Cloud Trail and I will the object. Cool. So on the source bucket, I have in, um, an object uploaded. And in the target, I should see something populate. I apologize, I had a different uh, event configured. Uh, so. That's the testament. also send me a text. Uh, so um, uh, the cross region rep uh, rep replication was pretty much the example that I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, because that's what I've seen a lot of people use. So, um, you know, sorry for that uh, brief interruption. So if you can uh, pay attention here again. So this is my source bucket. It's my target uh, duplicate, uh, duplication bucket. And I have two objects here. Now I just quickly tested what's going on with the function. And I had a different test event configured. And that's, that was the reason why I was not able to get uh, the duplication happen. So I'm going to put, let's say, the JavaScript logo on my source bucket. Let's make that source OK. I'm going to upload. And this is my duplicate bucket. And voila. So that 
duplication happened because of Lambda. In my example, okay, you also don't have to use Lambda, but that's a um, uh, that's what the code here is doing. Let me just go up top. How do I debug? You know. So the way you deal with uh, the way I've dealt with that is uh, a lot of print commands, and you know that's that's like the checkpoint, and you have all the print commands locked in the clockwork log. So that's the whole point of you know the uh, even more um, elaborate and exhaustive, uh, I should say, the clockwork logs can get as detailed as you want them to be, and you know you pretty much click on the log and you view the latest. And in the next example, which is going to be more exciting, uh, you would see uh, the different uh, outputs. And I had to have a lot of print statements uh, to make sure uh, uh, when I was debugging, I had to have a lot of print statements. And even here, I do have a lot of print statements. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've heard of XLA being used in the context of um, um, API Gateway uh, and, and for blue-green uh, blue deployments. I'm pretty sure we can use it for um, S3 as well. But, uh, but isn't S XLA more for HTTP uh, request calls and uh, the network traffic? Not know that. Um, anyway, so uh, the way I have done is by having a lot of print commands. But of course, uh, you have as many ways, as many stars you have in the sky. And notice that we have not yet taken a look at uh, the SNS uh, response. Let me just go back here really quick and let me refresh. And I'm expecting to see some emails that say, I've got an object in the name of the object. OK. So I got the latest two minutes ago, and it, and it did um, also let me know the name of the object. So this is the simple um, you know, cross-object uh, replication demo which I have seen in terms of real-world use cases. This is what uh, Lambda is most often, I want to dare to say, is used, is to copy things, is to take logs, is to replicate objects, is to basically, when something happens, copy, or something happens too. Do you use an MMS? Uh, I don't think. Um, well, it's more, uh, instead of looking at the, uh, I can say that when you create a topic in SNS, uh, the options that it gives you is pretty much like text uh, options. So you have either the email as a text or a, uh, uh, SMS as a text. So. Um, I have not tested it, but I, I want to venture to say you can. Uh, I've seen some really long uh, text messages. Data science? You don't apply this to data science. This is infrastructure stuff. This is, uh, this is all this is infrastructure stuff. Uh, for data science, the only example that I can say is uh, if you have, say, uh, DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL uh, in a database, and you have Steams being created uh, through the API gateway, you can use Lambda for concurrent functions and pretty much you know, keep pushing all the uh, Steams that you have uh, from DynamoDB and push it into Kinesis. OK, so that's an example. But that's not something Lambda can do. Uh, it's only going to be the middleman to get stuff in. 
But I also want to venture to say that Lambda can also be used standalone. I'm a, and I'll talk about that example at the end. So now, because we are all infrastructure folks, we'd like to deploy, and we'd also like to automate deployment. Here is the final demo. Uh, and this is the deploying of an EC2. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't have to use Lambda for that again. You can just use an auto scaling group, uh, and you can set the minimum instance that you would want. You can just take it one, two, five, or many ever. Uh, but I'm using Lambda, and we'll look at what's going to happen here. So, this, uh, so the function that I have, what it does is it basically, oh, Yeah, I don't know why I'm not able to get all the code in a single uh, screen, but if you can look, um, it's not any more than uh, uh, um, verbose declarations of the attributes of an EC2. The region, uh, the instance type, uh, you know, the security group. Uh, that's what you can find uh, on the top. And notice, because we are all, uh, you know, we have a lot of friends here from Red Hat, the AMI that I have here is a Red Hat AMI. And uh, this code is going to launch a T2 micro uh, with the Red Hat operating system. And then it's going to install Apache. And we're going to um, look at that as an example of how you can use Lambda to not only instantiate, but also install stuff on the back end. And uh, I'm just going to press go. And then I'm going to get the IP. I'm going to put it, uh, open a new tab and put it on. And we should hopefully see an installed Apache, at least the front page. Now, I'm using this example uh, to invite you all to think how you can use uh, infrastructure deployment. Uh, you can pretty much run anything you want uh, in terms of shell commands uh, right in Lambda. You can also use Lambda to deploy some, uh, um, to take in from um, Ansible or Chef. So that's also a possibility. And so, um, input that I'm getting here is the state input. Okay, and I want um, uh, to have a EC2 deployed at any given point in time. And if by mistake the EC2 that I have gets terminated, uh, then I want Lambda to recognize that the EC2 is terminated and launch the instance, install the whole thing, happen instantaneously. So let's look at the test. Um, uh, the input um, JSON. The input JSON. This is what I want. Okay. So, uh, in this, I'm pretty much declaring the state as terminated uh, because this is my test. I'm just going to uh, use this uh, to send in a message that says, the default is a terminated state, so I want Lambda to launch the instance. So that's what uh, the state message at this point would have. So when I'm going to look at the Cloud Watch, uh, that's what I'm expecting to see. And then these are just some uh, parameters that need to be passed. Uh, it's a, a necessity uh, um, argument. It's a necessity argument for the run consensus method. So the uh, image ID, which is the AMI, which is an Amazon machine image, and then is the instance type, which what I have right now is a T2 micro, because I'm cheap, and uh, then is the uh, max, min count and max count, which is the number of EC2s that I, uh, uh, that I want. And it has to, so I don't want more than one, which is why you have one and both the parameters. And then the instance initiating, uh, uh, and then the instance shutdown behavior. So uh, 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 when I say terminate, it should just basically terminate. I don't want any snapshots. I don't want any uh, uh, root volumes being disconnected. It should basically simply terminate. And then uh, the uh, key pair name that, I, uh, that I'm uh, passing, if I want to connect using the SSH. Uh, in the example that, I'm, uh, that we'll be looking at, you won't be connecting using SSH. It's just simply going to install the website, and you'll see the result. And if it does not uh, notice any uh, terminated state, it's just simply going to say it's all good, and 
finish the um, uh, return the instance ID and finish the function. So that's what's going to happen. Okay, we have about 15 minutes. So let's see. This is how my EC2 looks like right now. Cool. And this is my. So this thing says the instance ID, and uh, just remember this F2C98 for me, please. Let's go here. I'm going to refresh F2C98. Happened on its own. I was not required to go through the uh, CLI. I was not required to go through the dashboard for instantiating the EC2. Lambda took care of it for me. Now, of course, uh, in uh, uh, production deployments, you wouldn't have Lambda. You would simply have an auto scaling group and let AWS take care of it for you. Uh, but this is an example of uh, what you can do uh, for infrastructure deployment. Now, the real world use case that, uh, that I've come across for this is uh, taking EBS uh, snapshots. That's not Lambda, by the way. Uh, taking EBS snapshots, um, taking logs, um, uh, reverting security groups, these are some examples that I've uh, heard of, and that's the infrastructure um, uh, uh, use case. But at this point, you're really looking at infrastructure as code. So Lambda being used as infrastructure as code, uh, kind of like your answer. Uh, or using Python uh, for stuff that you would do using it. Uh, so let's look at some details here. OK, so this thing took a solid second and a half. And then uh, the total memory that was used was only 35 MB. Impressive. And then I have some information here. Let me just click on the CloudWatch to look to see what's going on. So in the event that you don't have an SNS configured, uh, the, your only resource uh, to look at um, to, uh, to look at the print commands uh, or, uh, or to look at return functions is to go to the CloudWatch logs. Uh, you have the monitoring tab uh, to know if the invocation happened, and we'll look at that in a moment. But I'm going to keep this tab open. I'm going to go to EC2. Hopefully, my uh, Apache has been deployed by now. Let me just go here, and let's see if it returns anything. Hopefully, it should. In the meanwhile, I just cheated before the uh, meetup started, and that's what I was doing with my configuration, is to get the IP address added to my security group. And that's a small uh, uh, piece of information which uh, needs to be in before you can see the connection go through. OK, so this is still struggling. Uh, but while that's happening, this is how it would look like. OK, now you have a different IP address here, of course, that's because uh, in, in, I'm going to say within two minutes, you'll see the same page with uh, my new IP. But this is how, uh, this is the Apache page. So uh, the EC2 was in, uh, instantiated. And I had the Apache install. And ta-da, you have the website. Or an example of a website. Now, you could also have pretty much the, uh, the whole script that you would have to install a WordPress website uh, baked right into your Lambda. And it would do it. Uh, but um, I'm going to stop at installing the Apache uh, for now. Yeah. Uh, and let's look to see if uh, the instantiation is complete. Still. Yes, that, that's the other uh, real world example that I've come across is uh, if there is any um, um, you know, wrong for implementation of security group, you can use Amda for the word. Okay. So let me just go here. Now, because you know, um, let's, I, I want to make one more point before I end uh, my talk. So uh, I'm not going to wait for the um, uh, presentation uh, for the Apache page to appear. Maybe is that a good time? Cool. So 
this is using yep, yep. this is using the uh, IP address that I got for the instance ID that Lambda created. It took I want to say at least in five minutes uh, for the whole thing to happen, but I'm impressed. You know, it took it did all itself. So again, you know, if you would want an SMS, you could send uh, you could put the SNS uh, information in, and it would send you that. Now notice that I'm just gonna right click uh, state terminate. Boom. So the moment you see the instance state as terminated, um, I'm expecting to see the same block of, uh, no, no, I'm expecting to see this uh, repeat again here, new instance ID. Okay, and uh, EC2 is here with a provision another instance and also install the Apache. Uh, while that's happening, let, let me just go for a brief moment, look at the code here. I think this is a uh, simple piece of information that I checked. Um, so this is the uh, install script that I'm having run in the, once the instance is up. Okay, I'm basically doing a yum update, like that's our ritual, and then I'm doing an install HTTPD, which is the Apache, and then start the service. That's it. Uh, but you could have that as elaborate as you would want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, here is my uh, here is my values that I'm passing, that I'm storing into the variable here called init script, and in user data I'm just passing the init script. Okay. So I'm basically passing all these uh, shell commands in the uh, user data variable here, and AWS is going to do it. So let's see if uh, okay. So this so this here says terminated. I'm going to go here and do a retry. Nothing's found. Hmm. So, oh, wait a minute. Did I have it disabled? Darn it. Oh boy, I apologize, I had it disabled. So I'd have to test again, and I'd have to terminate again, but this will be quick, I hope. So this is, a, uh, this is another easier feature um, uh, for you to have your CloudWatch logs uh, triggered when you want them to trigger. You don't have to have them on all the time. You can basically turn off when you, don't, when you think you don't need them. Uh, I don't want the EC2 uh, running when I'm not using it, which is why I disabled it. And now because I, you know, I'm having to do a demo, I'm going to enable it. I'm going to do the same thing and uh, hit um, delete, and hopefully that should do something. Okay, so I have another instance here, and notice this is a this is the test input that I gave in. It was not a uh, automated uh, terminate and instance creation. This was something that uh, I had to manually run the test command here so uh, that I would pass the input function. And let me just uh, do this again. And terminate. It's going to take about two minutes. And in this while, I want to quickly go to the monitoring tab. Okay. So this is the uh, last piece of information which I wanted to leave uh, you all with is that you don't have to always rely only on the CloudWatch information. You can go to the um, uh, monitoring tab, and it gives you a nice dashboard with a lot of uh, time series graphs. And you have the invocations here, uh, with basically the, 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 times, uh, uh, the number of times you had the invocation happen, and then the duration, and some other information. So. For the gentleman who asked about um, the asynchronous calls, uh, now Lambda gives you an inbuilt um, uh, concurrency option, okay, and it gives you about a thousand concurrency options. So if you can invoke Lambda a thousand times per second, um, if I'm not wrong. Don't quote me on that. Um, and that's going to be uh, the last setting that you will have here. So the concurrency option is where you have the invocation types come in, which is the asynchronous and the synchronous. 
uh, if you want the order to be preserved, that's when you would look at asynchronous. And the real world use case that I can think of is the DynamoDB streams log processing, where you, uh, you are bothered about the sequence of the event. Uh, and that's when you would have a concurrent um, or concurrent uh, invocation of Lambda coming into picture. If not, I've really not seen a lot of people use this option. So that's the uh, uh, throttle uh, command that you see here uh, in the, uh, at the top of the screen uh, is a stop that you can apply for concurrent executions. Um, but you, uh, you're only bothered about it in a uh, stream processing type of a scenario, which is not often. I don't want to say that. Okay, so what happened here? Okay, so this thing says terminated. I'm going to refresh. Hopefully, something is created here. Oh boy. You're killing me, aren't you? Uh, is it to terminate? Gosh darn it. Well, you know, if I'm past the fourth minute, uh, if I'm past 12 o'clock, I'm, I'm going to expect you all to uh, believe what I say. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the other points that I wanted to make very quickly is, let me see if this thing is triggered. Okay, and that's again something that I triggered right now. And uh, you will see that up here right below. And in the meanwhile, let me go. Yep. So basically the time limit, the scope, and you can't really know what's going on in the container that the function is being deployed in. That's one, you know, in, in, some, in some people would say that's a big limitation, but that's one of the limitations. And this is just things to keep note of in case you would want uh, to have this in your repo. I just put that in a slide. And uh, one other aspect that you can uh, have included in your um, architecture is the VPC, uh, which adds a layer of security. And uh, here is uh, so some of the use cases. Of course, it's taking the snapshots using Lambda for ETL and deleting snapshots. Now, uh, notice I've put a standalone application here. I've once come across a gentleman explaining his use case where he used just Lambda to change uh, a PDF scan file into a text file. So he, he basically just uploaded a PDF scan file into his S3, and Lambda did the whole thing and uploaded the text file into an S3. Okay, and uh, it did the op optical character recognition, it did the um, you know the text parsing and all that all itself. And the way he did that is by the moment the time would get closer to five minutes, uh, it would automatically launch another Lambda and take on uh, from there. And you know, that, so he basically had like one lambda launching, another lambda launching, another lambda. And as a, a standalone application itself, uh, instead of uh, thinking of it uh, necessarily as a infrastructure company. So, well, interestingly, he was pretty happy that he was only looking at um, uh, two, two, two digit numbers as opposed to four digit. So, I'm going to terminate this. Terminate that, and hopefully something happens. And in the meanwhile, here are some resources that I use to learn myself. Uh, uh, you know, you can just click on um, all these links, and it'll take you to those pages. Uh, Amazon has very exhaustive documentation, uh, and you know, that's that's one of the places that I would go look. And you can also uh, look at the other resources here. Uh, in uh, for those of you guys who do not know or may not know, you can go, uh, you all can go, if you're residents of Fairfax, get a library card from Loudoun, uh, and uh, that will allow access to Linda. Okay, and that's a pretty useful resource, by the way. Uh, I, I use it a lot for my learning. Okay. So, this thing is shutting down. Hopefully it will happen within a minute. Um, and let's see if I can retry. Okay. Oh, all along. All right, so.
Yep. So serverless application model in stub functions. Um, these are what I would broadly call as Lambda++. Plus plus. Uh, but in, uh, in the event uh, you may have missed uh, noticing what happened here, um, the previous instance got terminated and uh, right on its place, Lambda did its job and launched the new instance right back in. And that happened without any uh, manual intervention that happened on its own. And that's all uh, for today, folks. Uh, I want to thank uh, John Kennedy uh, and Dr. Hoffman, of course, and uh, Greg Crosby uh, for giving me this opportunity and for inspiring me for uh, making this presentation. Hopefully it has added value to you all, and hopefully you can try to think of ways to using Lambda. All right, so let me just... Quick shout out to our sponsors.